Greetings from Global Women's Project. For more than 40 years, Global Women's Project has had a simple, lofty, two-part mission focused on education for one another and support for women throughout the world. We seek to educate others in the Church of the Brethren and beyond about poverty and injustice and how our overconsumption directly contributes to others' suffering. A rotating group of volunteers, traditionally women, coordinate Global Women's Project. See anyone you recognize? Actually, four of these women are retired from GWP, and we have two new women starting this fall. Who would you recommend for our steering committee? Maybe yourself. My name is Anna Lisa Gross, and I'm kneeling on the far right. GWP invites you to live in solidarity with the rest of God's creation. Have you heard, live simply, that others may simply live? We strive to do so, and even in the ways our lives are not simple, we strive to be grateful for our luxuries and turn that gratitude into generosity. We share resources with partners throughout the world. The projects can be anything from sewing cooperatives to radio programming to scooters for social workers. They must be led by a woman or women who are from the community or country. They must be grounded in nonviolence and peace building. They must be helping women and can help others too. A typical yearly grant from GWP is $1,500 and women can do a lot with that money. Life is expensive, says Esperance, a woman in Rwanda. And so she started a project by that name after the 1994 genocide, many survivors were widows, orphans, and carrying all kinds of injury. Esperance wanted to help people find stability, nutrition, purpose in their life, and some basic income. She had a vision of starting a farm. She knew a man named Etienne who was studying at the Earlham School of Religion while I was a student at Bethany Theological Seminary. Etienne introduced Esperance to Global Women's Project and we formed a partnership. Our funds have been used to buy land, seeds, pay teachers, and now Esperance and the farmers sell their surplus vegetables and that income they can use to buy medicine, to send their kids to school, and meet other needs. Growing Grounds began as a ministry to women in the Wabash County Jail. Nutrition, parenting, conflict resolution, knitting classes were some of what they were offering. Over the years, they saw the same women coming back into the jail again and again. And the leadership of Growing Grounds decided to get to the bottom of understanding recidivism, why women end up back in the jail over and over, and address the root of those problems. Global Women's Project got to know this project, Growing Grounds, because its leadership is rooted in the Wabash Church of the Brethren. And Growing Grounds uses GWP grants for things like transportation support to probation appointments or job interviews, secure and stable transitional housing, 12-step programs, and more. While Global Women's Project grants are the main funding source for a project partner like Life is Expensive in Rwanda, in Wabash, Indiana, $1,500 a year or even $3,000 a year does not go as far. And we are one of several funding partners for a group like Growing Grounds. Sister Stella is the founder and energy and heart of SITA, shifting ideas through education for African women. We got to know Sister Stella through Louis Raymond former GWP steering committee member. Sister Stella and her organization work with girls in Uganda, providing scholarships to help girls attend school, providing community and cultural support for women and girls pursuing education. 
Sister Stella throws community parties because she's learned that there needs to be an alternative reason for communities to gather in celebration rather than female genital mutilation, a rite of passage for girls entering adolescence or puberty that has traditionally brought communities together. Women in Chiapas, Mexico share health education with girls and with one another. And in the process, they are reclaiming ancient indigenous practices around women's bodies and menstruation. They gather for workshops where they get to know one another, where they practice respect for one another and for their own bodies. They make cloth menstrual pads together, which are not only better for girls and women's bodies, but they're better for the planet. We got to know this project through Lindsay Fry, who I attended seminary with and who worked in Chiapas with Mennonite Central Committee. And Lindsay is one of our brand new members of the Global Women's Project Steering Committee. Women in Nauru, South Sudan formed a sewing cooperative several years ago. And now there's many as 100 women who share about eight sewing machines. By making clothing and bed sheets with these machines, women can earn money for medicine, soap, food, and school fees for their children. We got to know this project through David Radcliffe and New Community Project. Through NCP trips, members and friends of Global Women's Project have been able to visit Gladys and the women of Nerus. The Cultural Academy for Peace in India has been working with women since the early 80s. They have shelters, one for women escaping domestic abuse and their families, and another for teenage girls escaping sex trafficking. In those shelters, not only do they have a safe place to live and good food to eat, but they receive counseling, trauma healing, job training, and more. Cultural Academy for Peace doesn't just work with these women. They work with police, lawyers, government officials, psychiatrists, professors, and other professionals, training them in gender-based violence reduction and conflict resolution. CAP, Cultural Academy for Peace, is absolutely an agent of change in their whole society. We got to know CAP through Deanna Brown's cultural connections trips to India, which members and friends of Global Women's Project have traveled on. You too could go on a trip with Deanna Brown to India if you're a woman, or people of any gender are welcome to go on David Radcliffe's trips with New Community Project. He goes all over the world. CAP shelters many girls who have been trafficked for sex. These photos are from a street theater they designed to raise awareness of human trafficking. Cap says, after drugs and arm trade, human trafficking is the third largest organized crime across the globe. As per government statistics, every eight minutes a child goes missing in our country. As a responsible citizen and as a human being, is, it is important that we raise our voices against such atrocities. We need to stand together to bring an end to such cruelty. So let's move together in harmony and unity to build a world where there is peace and respect for life through nonviolent strategies. One of CAP's programs is Wheels for Women a teenager who escaped sex trafficking living in Cap's Saki shelter was ready to start job training and she said she'd always wanted to be an auto rickshaw driver. Before Cap got her behind the wheel, they met with local, local auto rickshaw drivers and educated these men about gender-based violence and equality for women. And they learned from the drivers about how this young woman could be safe as an auto rickshaw driver. Many male drivers were slow to warm up to women drivers, but now many more are supportive and more women have learned to drive auto rickshaws. In fact, this woman learned to drive an auto rickshaw 
developed new skills, practiced leadership, and now is president of her small town. In the interest of time, I've breezed through our partners, pausing for a few details about CAP's work. All of our partner projects are worthy of days of conversation and your prayers. We met this Togo project through Bev Ott, who met one of the coordinators while living in France. They work with social workers who go out into the communities looking for the base cause of poverty to address that rather than just dealing with the symptoms of poverty. You may have noticed that I told you the connection for each of our partner projects. As a small volunteer-led organization, we believe we should not spend our funds, your donations, on flying ourselves to partner projects. The cost of one trip to Uganda could be the same as an annual grant to our partners in Uganda. Therefore, we nurture partnerships that have some other connection, new community project, cultural connections, personal relationships. Then when someone is already making a trip to that part of the world, we can send along money, cards, and then in return, get stories, photos, and updates. We also try to communicate with all of our current partners by email or Facebook. Some that means constant communication and others means once a year or so. In 41 years, GWP has supported projects throughout the entire world, sometimes a one-time grant, short-term partnerships, or in the last two decades, we've been focusing on longer-term relationships with the same small project partners so that they can grow their capacity in their own local context and not be looking for a new funding source year after year. You can see this map and learn more GWP history in an article in the December 2018 Messenger Magazine. Church of the Brethren Women created GWP in 1978 because they were so inspired by a speech by Ruth Ann Knekel Johansson. Ruth Ann wrote, liberation is a cooperative movement at the most fundamental level as being born or giving birth reminds us Therefore, by extension, we know that as members of the human family, none of us can be liberated alone because of the indwelling of the spirit, which makes us restless for reunion with God and which moves us toward community. We must join together to enable the birth of a more humane society here at home and to extend that same liberation globally. Ruth Ann's words are as true today as they were in 1978. Our faith, our scriptures, our Lord, our bodies teach us. We can only be liberated together. Some of the conversations that we're having today about gender and equality are novel. And a lot of them sound like the same conversations from 1978. That our liberation is linked to all people's is a timeless truth. Go to our humble website to get these resources. We have a brand new advent calendar and are eager for congregations, Sunday school classes, and families to use it this December. This is our first one and it highlights the sewing project in South Sudan. When we turn to Lent, we ho hope you will use our daily Lenten calendar in your spiritual practice. You can get it on paper, by email, or on Facebook. Every March is International Women's Day, and we have worship resources and stories you might use in personal or community worship and reflection. In May, we celebrate Mother's Day, and GWP invites you to give a donation in honor of your mother or a person who has nurtured you, rather than giving more stuff. The Children's Giving Project, focusing on Sister Stella's work in Uganda, could be used in Sunday school or children's time any season of the year. God be with you as you cultivate gratitude for the many luxuries in your life and turn it into generosity as you share with women and their families around the world.